Sometimes you wish you were out enjoying life, having fun, going to restaurants and hanging out with friends, but there are a lot of nights where you have to sacrifice. One Sunday afternoon, I got a text from one of my friends that lives in Washington, D.C., and he said, hey, have you seen what's on the main science subreddit? And I said, no, I don't really do Reddit, uh, but uh, why? What is there? He said, you will not believe it. He sent me a screenshot, and I was, wow. The top story was a molecular geneticist and the research that he was completing, and it was some groundbreaking stuff. Not only was it a cool article, that scientist, he's my brother. Yes, that guy with the awesome red hair and the greatest beard you've ever seen, he is my little brother, Mark Castleberry, or Dr. Castleberry, if you want to be proper. This was such a cool moment to see my brother's work blossom and be celebrated by other people. I started going through the comments on Reddit and my favorite one was this. He had a secret admirer. There was somebody in the comments that said this, Dr. Gingerbeard, breaking hearts just so he can put them back together. <laughs> I love it. It is so cool to see my little brother doing such amazing work. He just got his PhD and I wanted to virtually interview him and not only see what he has done and what he is doing, but what he has learned along the way, what he would say to himself back in high school, and some insight that he has for high school and college graduates. So, here we go. Hey Mark, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I just wanna tell you, I am so proud of everything that you've accomplished. You have really excelled in so many ways, and wow, I am just, I just don't even know what to say. I am so proud of what you have accomplished. So tell everybody, what is your title? I have a PhD in molecular genetics from the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine. That basically means is while I was here at Cincinnati, I was trained to understand the mechanisms behind um, different disease states and why they are occurring, uh, what they're doing, and how we may be able to treat these disease states going forward. <laughs> that sounds really, really complex. How long total were you in school? It's been about nine and a half, we'll call it 10 years since I started as a freshman at um, Henderson State University in South Arkansas, up until now where I finished my PhD in the University of Cincinnati. Uh, although there were a lot of headaches along the way, I'm very happy and fortunate to have this experience. Uh, not only does it give me personal satisfaction knowing that I may be helping people um, while I'm alive, but also that the work I do every day may help people uh, long after I'm gone with dealing with various disease states. I really love your long-term perspective on this, that your work just doesn't benefit today or this week, this year, even this decade, that your work really has a long-term scope. Uh, recently, I've, I've been looking back at some, some work that just now is kind of bubbling up to be making a lot of change in our world today. And what I've noticed is a lot of the work that is really influencing some of the things that are going on today actually started back in the 80s. So I absolutely love that idea that, that you have this perspective that I might not even see everything that my work does, but it sets up the next generation for scientific and medical advances. So what's next for you? Next, uh, in about five days, I'll be moving to Nashville, Tennessee to start my uh, postdoctoral training at Vanderbilt Medical Center, uh, where I'll be researching the underlying causes of inflammation in the kidneys and specifically um, studying those in relation to the COVID-19 virus. COVID research, very timely and very important. So let me, let me ask it like this. Why does what you do matter? What I do for a living matters because it, it takes people, just ordinary people like myself, to better understand why different disease states are happening in people and not only understand how they're happening, but understand how we might be able to improve the health of others that are afflicted by these disease states going forward. Um, not only uh, would it help people possibly while I am alive, but long after I'm dead. 
and um, it's just very rewarding in order to help people out and I figure uh, while I'm here on earth I might as well uh, help as many people as I can before I go. Again, I love that idea of standing on the work of previous generations, of doing things, uh, building on top of what they have done. That is the core of how we, as a civilization, have have just come to where we are. That, that from the from the very dawn of creation, that that we have made these discoveries and we have. Uh, increased our knowledge and applied that knowledge and it's because of all of those those years and centuries and millennia of work and progress that now we get to enjoy the life that we have we get to enjoy the lifespan that we have and we get to enjoy really the productivity that uh, that all of that affords us it's truly truly amazing if you could go back in time and mark the PhD could go back and talk to Mark, the freshman in high school, what would you say to him? Well, if I could go back and talk to freshman Mark at high school, at Camden and Fairview High School, um, I would have a lot to say to them. <laughs> but one would be pay a lot more attention in English class <laughs> because uh, anything that you can do to improve your writing, your reading skills, and your verbal communication skills will really help you out more than you could ever understand as a high schooler. Um, public speaking, do it as much as you can. Get in the drama club, just be very comfortable with talking to people in a public setting because that will take you a lot farther than you would realize at the time. And I know a lot of people hate public speaking, but it really does um, just take a lot of practice. And I'm very fortunate to have uh, over a decade of uh, public speaking experience and that's really immensely helped me throughout my career. Um, also, I would say just always, just try to always be improving your work ethic. Um, try to learn how to be more efficient with everything you do. Try to be self-sustaining, not relying on other people, but not to block all other people out. Get help when you need it, but always try to be empowering yourself that you can be self-sufficient one day when you hit the job force. And what would you say to recent high school or college graduates? If I had anything else to add to talk to any um, person in high school or college, um, there's going to be a lot of lot of hard times ahead. Um, there's going to be a lot of times where you doubt if you're even doing the right thing or if you're even capable of doing what you're doing. Um, but what I would say is that you can. All it takes is dedication and hard work. Sometimes you wish you were out enjoying life, having fun, going to restaurants and hanging out with friends, but there are a lot of nights where you have to sacrifice and you might have to stay up all night long working on projects. And it might not just be once, it might happen every night <laughs> for months and it might happen several dozen times over the course of a year. However, uh, nothing in life that's worth having comes easily and it does require sacrifice and learning to sacrifice now to give yourself a better future will definitely uh, improve your life because you'll just be setting yourself up for success later on. So it's not all about having fun and it's not all about work. It's about a healthy balance, but in order to get far, um, it definitely does require a lot of hard work and don't lose sight of that. Don't doubt yourself. If you need help, go seek help from other people. Learn from the advice and mistakes of others. Uh, there's a famous saying that I love that smart men learn from their mistakes, but wise men learn from the mistakes of others. And so I would definitely just, any, any way you can improve yourself as far as personal development, professional development, just do as much as you can. As soon as you can do it, don't be afraid to do it. I mean, I was an, I was an AP student in high school. Um, I made A's and B's in uh, undergraduate university and I just applied myself even harder once I got to graduate school and a lot of extremely hard nights basically relearning how to study properly and uh, work hard and after doing so I come out the other end a much better person and um, just have faith in yourself surround yourself with people that empower you and that's really what I would say delayed gratification is such a big thing 
And I'm so thankful that we learned that um, from our parents, that they really taught us that we didn't have to have everything that we wanted right now, that it was better to put in the work and then enjoy the benefits way down the line. There's even a, a biblical principle there that, that what we sow, we will reap, but there is a delay. There is that, that time of growth. And I was so thankful that, that our parents modeled that for us, that uh, they didn't uh, spend a whole lot of money that they didn't have, but they were very frugal and were, were able to do really great things to set us up uh, because they uh, delayed that gratification that, that they could have had and honestly they could, that they deserved, but they did it for us and they modeled that so well. You've got to put in the work and then it takes time for that to come out to, to, to flower and to produce fruit. Mark, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. I know that uh, you are trying to get uh, planted in Nashville before you start your work at Vanderbilt. And again, I just want to say it is a privilege to be your brother, to get to stand uh, alongside a guy who is contributing so much and uh, who just has amazing things in his future. So thank you again, and we're excited to see what you are gonna do for all mankind.